Hi there, welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley, and for the next hour, uh, we're going to have a conversation. We're going to talk about dining out. All levels are welcome. We're just going to relax and practice our English in conversation, talking about dining out. And so, hello, Keyshawn. Welcome. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, Keyshawn, you and your volume. You make me crazy. Oh, I shake my fist in anger. <laughs> Not really. Now okay, DJ? It's a little better. Thanks, Keyshawn. Okay. Uh, howdy, Martin. Thanks for joining me again. Hi, teacher. I'm Dean in uh, Orange at this moment. You, you are? Mind. Get out. What are you having? <laughs> I'm being in uh, orange. You're dining. Dining. A dining. Long eye. Okay. You're dining on Can an you orange? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed you are. <laughs> wow, that's a... Your orange looks very yellow. Can you hold that up again? Oh, okay. All right. It looks normal now. Okay. Yeah, All right. Normal. Yes. Yeah. All right, I was Something concerned. <laughs> I was concerned about your health for a second. For a second. <laughs> Not for long. Just for a second I was concerned. Uh, hi, Roger. Nice to see you. Hi, teacher. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Uh, I'm good, but I don't eat as healthily, ooh, healthily, adverb, as Martin does. How about you, Roger? Do you, do you eat healthy foods? Mm, no, really. <laughs> I eat everything. Everything okay. that I can eat. <laughs> Roger, would you rather have a cheeseburger or an orange? If I'm going to offer you cheeseburger, orange, which would you take, Roger? Uh, I think so. that it, it depends if I'm hungry or, or not. Oh, because okay. if I just uh, eat uh, minutes before, I can eat uh, an orange. But if oh, I am okay. so angry, I will choose the, the burger. Okay, all right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, uh, welcome, Gregory. Hello. Hi, hi again. Nice to see you again. Yeah, Gregory, do you like to eat out at restaurants? Uh, you know, I like it, uh, but uh, when I... Uh, sit in a restaurant and uh, sort how much it uh, cost. It's <laughs> not so tasty. <laughs> oh no! You've got to, Gregory. Uh, free your mind. Don't worry about it. When you go uh, yes, out to a... yes. Uh, it's so romantic. We we'll go to the uh, restaurant near the sea and so waves and see sea mm. and uh, eat uh, seafood. Oh, it's very yeah. romantic. Oh yeah, nice. Well, when I dine out, I just for I. It's actually this is, this is a bad quality in myself. When I go out, I I just I tend to believe that I'm a millionaire. I totally forget. The problem is I money. like put, uh, I like my wife cookies, cooking. Ah. Very much. So I no need a restaurant. Well, why don't you make her start a restaurant, Gregory? Sorry? You said you like your wife's food very much? Yes, more than All right. a restaurant. Well, good. Put her to work. Make her start a restaurant. <laughs> uh, she, she, she has a uh, uh, good profession. She's a dentist. Oh, it's really? Much okay. better than a restaurant. Mm, yeah, you're right. You're, yeah, you're, uh, you're 100% right. I agree. Uh, let me say howdy to Fausto. Fausto, long time no see. Where you been hiding? Fausto, hello, hello. Earth, planet, verbling to Fausto. Come in, Fausto. Oh, he's not seeing me. I can't hear you. I, I don't know if you have a problem with your system or the microphone or 
You don't seem to be muted, but uh, I can't hear you, and I see no indication of your little lights. So, Fausto, try to fix that so you can talk to me. I think Come he, back, Fausto. Yeah, I, I don't know. He I bopped he's out. Dining in this moment. Yeah, pro probably. <laughs> he's dining. <laughs> he doesn't want to speak with his mouth full. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, th I think that, but I, I didn't find the I, way to say in English. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, there you go. There's an example. Okay, Fausto, how about now? Testing. Okay, yes. hello, teacher. Ah, can there you, you go. Now? Yeah, now okay. I can hear you. All right, how you doing, man? Good, and with a lot of uh, activities here in my job, because I had a new job uh, the last uh, month. I decided to move to another company, because the last company that I was uh, working at, uh, at that, it was a little uh, demanding for my life. I don't know uh, if you just remember about that. I, I remember you talking about your boss in uh, not <laughs> such a flattering way. <laughs> yes, that's right. But also, yeah. I, I usually uh, work uh, uh, overtime during the middle nights or something like that. And yeah. I think that I started to, to do the same things. Uh, this is the reason that I decided to move to another company. Right now, I am working in an international company with Indian people. So um, it's a little complicated for me because they are using a different kind of accent. Yes, they yeah. are. And be, be careful, Fausto, about what you say because your boss, Keyshawn, is here. Okay. Oh, so. sorry, sorry, Kishan. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and the Indian uh, like dining and a spicy food. Always. Oh, yeah. Is that okay? Let's wait a minute. Is that true? Kishan? Yes. K All right. Are we just making assumptions? Are we being stereotypical? Do all Indians like spicy food? Um. I can I cannot say about the all Indian, but most of Indian like spicy too. So uh, you can say the Indian cooking is very spicy. They use uh, they use uh, many spices, and uh, without spices, they think that the food is not good. No okay, well, well, many Indians are vegetarians. Uh, Kishan, are you a vegetarian? Uh, yes, teacher. This is diet that many Indians are vegetarian for a for religion for religion for religion purpose. Uh, right. Yes. Uh, I also I am um, uh, not uh, vegetarian. I I some I uh, I eat non veg also, but uh, I don't eat uh, many things. Only one or two, uh, which is permitted in my religion. Okay. All right, so you do, uh, okay, so vegetarian is a person who eats only vegetables. Uh, a person who eats, or a, an animal for that matter, who eats meat is called, okay, for example, a tiger is, Keyshawn, do you know yes, the word? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, what is a tiger, for example? Uh, tiger? Yes, I know tiger. Yes. yes. Uh, okay, is a tiger a vegetarian? No, tiger is non vegetarian. <laughs> so, what is it? <laughs> but uh, we are not tiger, we are human beings. <laughs> I know, I'm just trying to introduce some vocabulary, you silly. Yeah, I, all right, a tiger is a carnivore. carnivore. All right, some, uh, uh, an animal like a human or a bear is an omnivore because we eat vegetables and meat. Carnivores eat meat. Uh, Kishan, are you... Uh, uh, and, and actually the the real term for so a vegetarian is an herbivore. Somebody, somebody or an animal that eats only vegetables is an herb herbivore. An animal that eats only meat is a carnivore, and like a bear or a human that eats both is an omnivore. But some humans could be one or the other, or both. Uh, Kishan, are you an herbivore, an omnivore, or carnivore? Yes, 
I eat both veg and non veg. I forgot oh. There you go. You're an omnivore. Omnivore. Okay, Martin, the orange eater. Martin, yes. are yes. you an, uh, a carnivore, an omnivore, or an herbivore? Both. Both. Then you're an omnivore. <laughs> both. You can't say both. If, if I give you a choice of three things, you have to pick one. An omnivore eats both vegetables and meat. Okay. Um, okay. Our topic is supposed to be dining out. Martin, when is the last time you went to a restaurant? Last time when I went to the restaurant was in last weekend. I went to the Chinese uh, restaurant, Buffet. In, in uh, sometimes I like to to go to Chinese restaurant because I I prefer eat a, um, um, I prefer eat a vegetables and I think the Chinese Chinese cuisine use a lot of vegetable. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So, uh, okay, last think, weekend you went I to... Think that, I think that, that kind of food is is more uh, healthy than the fat food of uh, American food. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you're correct, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have almost nothing to say about that. In the defense of American food, I should say nothing, really. I have actually, no way to actually, defend actually it. The, the, Asian, the Asian food is more health, healthy, I guess. Yeah, but be, okay, Martin, I live in Asia. I live in the Philippines. So, yes, no. <laughs> uh, um, I I never been in Philippines. I don't know what is the kind well, of uh, food there, but I was in in Thailand. In Thailand. Oh I yeah, eat, uh, Thai food. Mm. Uh, exotic exotic food. He well, eat, unless you uh, live there, and then chicken glutes. Sometimes so difficult eat that kind of food. For me. Uh, oh, Martin, did, did, have you ever tried Jungle Prince? Never. Curry? No, no, I, no, no, no. There's a dish called Jungle Prince Curry. Uh, it may be called something. I know it's called something else. This is an English, anglicized, made Jungle into English Prince. name. Jungle Prince Curry uh, from Thailand. No, I'm not try it. It'll burn your ears off. Uh, it's really mm. spicy. But they put, like, everything in it. Shrimp and chicken and pork and your mother's ears, everything in there. It's crazy. And it's really spicy. So you don't even know what you're eating. Okay, one thing, uh, Martin, in class. Martin likes to go to a buffet where they put all the food out and you get your own food and put it on a plate. It's yes. a buffet. The final T is buffet. silent. It's Silent. Okay, so this is a very common mistake. There is a number of, uh, that's right, Martin, there are a number of English words stolen from French which end with a T, where the T, when we pronounce it in English, the T, and French actually, the T is silent. Buffet, ballet, uh, the person who parks your car outside a fancy restaurant Bobby. is a valet. Valet, Bobby. Valet, A. It sounds like an A-Y ending. The, the T is, it's very weird. It's an E-T ending in English when we write it. But when we pronounce it, it's A. Valet, valet, buffet. And then I went to buffet last week. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, sure. Roger, talk to me. When's the last time you went to a restaurant? Can you describe it for me a little bit? 
<clears throat> well, um, it was like two weeks ago. Uh, it's a little restaurant that is near from here. Uh, it's most... Uh, they prepare most uh, food with so much meat. <laughs> <laughs> Not Nothing healthy, really. <laughs> <laughs> so much meat. <laughs> okay, so what kind of meat? Yeah, like monkey meat, uh, uh, parrot meat, hippopotamus meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It must be. Mm, porky meat. Porky? <laughs> Buddy, buddy, yeah. buddy, porky pig. Okay, all right. Okay, Roger. I asked Roger to describe, and Roger, congratulations. You gave me a when, a where, and a what. When when we describe things in English, okay. Whenever you're asked to describe things, or simply you're trying to make conversation, so you're you want to tell a story, or you're taking an English test or you're in a job interview and you need to describe one of your functions at work, whatever, there are many, many uh, possible situations where we need to use description. Roger did a very nice job because he jumped all over the W questions, when, where, what, how, who. When, we're, when I ask somebody to describe something, that's the first thing you should think about. Or when somebody asks you to describe, think about, okay, who, where, when, what is the background, Where's, when did it happen, where did it happen, who were you with, what happened. Okay. Um, and then, just a, a little advice if you need to be speaking English and you want to talk think about those things just as Roger just demonstrated and then if you want to add detail think about your senses okay I, uh, I went to the uh, the meat restaurant with Roger <laughs> it smelled delicious you could smell the crispy burning fat uh, the taste was delicious um, crispy but chewy oh the sense of oh, the feel of the food uh, it was very uh, loud and active oh the sounds of the restaurant okay Da, 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 da. Description. Start with a who, what, where, when, which is your background, and then go on to the sensory information to give a lot more detail. Thank you, Roger. Nice job. Okay. Okay. Well, let's let some others practice. Fausto. Talk to me about the last time you went to dine out. Okay, teacher. Well, I think that I was, uh, I was, or oh, I went to the restaurant the last Friday because I was celebrating the Valentine's Day or something like that with oh, my friends. Yeah. And also, I, I went to the restaurant in front of uh, a very beautiful, beautiful view, uh, view here in Guadalajara. Because uh, you can see all the city with the light night with the lights in the nights. And it was very beautiful. I eat uh, seafood, especially I eat like a main course uh, lobster. Oh. Yes, that was amazing because it was fresh and healthy. I know that the rest that restaurant uh, grows usually grows all the animals that they use uh, to prepare healthy food in a local farmer, you know, in, in especially in, in this restaurant you can select a uh, fish or in this case a lobster uh, in a big, big, very big uh, aquarium or something like that. Ooh, and yeah. you can 
and you can uh, yes uh, and you can select uh, any kind of fish or animal to to decide to eat uh, for me that was amazing because uh, that is uh, guaranteed that it was it it will be fresh yeah uh, fausto yeah. but what if a cat ran into the restaurant i want That's that a- one <laughs> okay okay <laughs> And mm-hmm. yes, yes. Um, well, in my case, <laughs> I only select a uh, very big uh, lobster, and that's oh. it. I love With, lobster. Um, ah, me too. Hmm. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing, Fausto. Okay. Uh, they don't grow. You wouldn't normally in English say, "Oh, they grow their own animals." You would probably use the verb raise. Okay, raise. Okay, okay, a farmer raises chickens. Oh, when I was a child, we raised chickens and pigs. Actually, that's true. Uh, we did. Um, when I was growing up, my family raised chickens for eggs and, and ch- for meat and pigs, right? So uh, we also say about food, we... Uh, you, for food, you can say grow or raise, uh, but usually you use grow. We, we grew corn. Um, okay. okay. Normally for animals, you say raise, but... Okay, that was a good job, Fausto, and I know you did a good job because you're starting to make me hungry, actually. So let's <laughs> see if... Gregory can torture me some more and make me even hungrier. Uh, Gregory, yes. I have a question for you. Uh, yes, tell me the yes. truth. Last Friday was Valentine's Day, as Fausto noted. Uh, I know you're married. Did you take your wife out to dinner? I proposed her, but uh, she was uh, tired and uh, uh, without any proper uh, apt mood for a restaurant. It's not a <laughs> good day for us, uh, so we just go to the... Uh, we, we buy food in the restaurant, but we go at home eat it. And uh, it was great because food was delicious. Uh, it was a bad day. Gregory, I, I did... It. I have to tell you, but, before I let you describe more, I did exactly the same thing with my wife. <laughs> We just weren't in the mood to eat out, so we we got takeout food and we brought it home. That's funny. Okay, okay I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I buy her gift. Uh, this was my symbol of love. Uh, very nice. What did you, okay? What did you have? What did you you got takeout? Okay, when you go to a restaurant and you get food and you bring it home, that's. In English, we say that that is, it can be a noun. I took out food. Uh, sorry, that's a verb. Duh. Uh, we got takeout. It can be a noun. This is a phrasal verb, a verb and a preposition. All right. It can be used as a verb or it can be used as a noun. So, uh, Gregory, what did you get for takeout? Uh, we take out shawarma. We like it. Uh, shawarma. Arab shawarma? Food, uh, <laughs> Shawarma, yes. It's good meat with vegetables and uh, uh, hummus and some salt uh, uh, awesome. vegetables. Oh, yes. cool. Does that, uh, I wonder if our uh, Latin American friends, do you guys know what shawarma is? Martin, Roger, Fausto? Do you know shawarma? I don't know. No? Martin, do you know what shawarma is? No. No? Fausto? Neither do you? Okay. Well, here we go, Gregory. You and I have to explain what shawarma is. It's red meat, special meat of, uh, I don't know what uh, creature, what animal. Uh, Chicken. Not chicken. It's... uh, Sometimes it's chicken, sometimes it's beef. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's red. It's red meat, special uh, part of... uh, um, yeah, it, uh, in fact, it's, yeah, in fact, it's if it's beef, it's from a, what's called the brisket. But anyway, that's besides the point. It's beef, 
But explain uh, it. See if you can explain it's, it. It's interesting how cook it. It's uh, put yes. in a, a special um, device, a special own when it's uh, turned over. Right. And, uh, uh. and after that, uh, mm, cut it in uh, small pieces and put in the pita. Okay. Uh, put in, uh, yeah. Very good. All right. Excellent. It's beef and it's cooked on a rotisserie. All right. In, oh, another French word. A lot of cooking words, by the way, English have stolen from the French. And you know why? All right. Don't, don't tell Teacher Martin or any of those guys, the British teachers, I said this, but British people can't cook. They, they suck. <laughs> so... They've stolen all the words for cooking from the French people who can cook. From They've stolen all the words from French or Italians who are really good at cooking. All right? But, okay, please don't tell any of the British teachers I said this, but it's true. All the words that we use in English for, for cooking utensils, cooking uh, saute, flambe, entree, all these words are French or Italian because they know how to cook. Anyway, uh, what Gregory was describing is a rotisserie. Shawarma, the meat is put on some kind of device that turns it and turns it and turns it. All right, That's called a rotisserie. You guys may have seen chicken that they they stick the chicken on a stick, you know, and then the chicken turns and turns and turns around and around to cook. Okay, that, that type of cooking or that type of device is called a rotisserie. Shawarma is cooked on a, on a rotisserie. The heat comes from one side, but the meat spins around, which is actually a very good cooking method because it allows the fat to drip down and flavor the meat and then heat uh, on, off, on, off, on, off. It actually helps develop the flavors. Anyway, whatever. I'm talking too much like a chef. Anyway, then the meat, as Gregory noted, is sliced very small, very thin, and wrapped in a pita with other vegetables. Um, we have this in the Philippines. Uh, I like my shawarma very spicy with a very hot sauce. How about you, Gregory? No, I don't like... Uh, you don't like spicy? spicy? No, a little, not much. Okay. You, you can have a kind of a spicy mayonnaise. You can have a sort of a cool uh, yogurt dressing. There's, there's different ways to have it, but anyway, delicious. I love shawarma. It's quite popular here in the Philippines. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I am now... Okay. Good job, Gregory. Now you're. I'm even hungrier. Uh Keyshawn, can you make me even hungrier? Can you make me end the class early? Say, the hell with you guys. I'm going to go eat lunch. Can you do it? I challenge you. <laughs> Keyshawn, talk to me about the last time you went to a restaurant. I want you to practice describing. Who, what, where, when, why? Why were you there? What were you doing? Yes, uh, in one the boat. It has been a long time, a month ago. Uh, 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 you, Keyshawn, time out. Your volume. I yes, can sure, barely sure. hear you. Sure, teacher, sure. Just 10 minutes. Okay. Keyshawn, go ahead. You, you can try again. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Um, I think it has been uh, a long, uh, sorry, a month ago I went, I went, uh, for dining out with my family and uh, I like Chinese food very much so uh, I like uh, Chinese I like uh, American food I like Indian food and uh, the last time I had uh, I remember that was a a ah. typical English yes that was a uh, Keyshawn, I can barely hear you. you. 
you sound like you're in the bottom of a well or something. I'm trying to fix the problem. Okay, let me come back to you because I can I can not quite understand what you're saying. It's so very faint. Um, I'm sorry, Keisha, and I'll come back to you. Martin. Martin, make me hungry. Me too. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for the end of the class to go to my kitchen and prepare my dinner. Yeah, my well, dinner. He, where I am, Martin, it's 11.35 in the morning, so when the class ends, it's going to be noon. It's lunchtime for me. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, my wife is cooking something. I can smell meat. What? He, what <laughs> what he's cooking? I don't know, what but it, cooking? I, if I had to guess, I would say it's pork, maybe pork chops. Pork. You can breathe. <laughs> I can smell. I can smell it. Okay, he's cooking you can something. Smell it. Okay. Yeah. I I think I will prepare a salad tonight. I like to I I like to eat in the night uh, healthy food because I. I like to to dream well. Sometimes when I eat a, a, a big hamburger in the night, I can drink. I can dream. Sometimes I have a, a bad dreams. I don't know who's saying it. With you, how when you dream with monster when because you eat a lot. When you night drink. Tomorrow. Hmm? What's that? Uh, uh, sorry, I'm trying to help to Martin. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't know the correct word here. I think it is nightmare. Nightmare. Nightmare, like a bad yes. dream. Yes. Ah. Nightmares. Okay. Traffic was a nightmare. Common phrase. Okay, so not it means literally bad dreams, a nightmare, but we also use it to talk about things that are just totally unpleasant. Um, and, and always I, I prefer eat a vegetable. It's in, in the pain of the occasion, I like to eat a meat, but I, I, don't, I don't like eat chicken, for example. Uh, because I love the animals, I I prefer it vegetable, and and I think it is better for my 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 health and for my body, I guess. Yeah. And I, I I want to care for my overweight. Sometimes I suffer <laughs> because I I I wish I could lose a uh, uh, weight. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, I want to look at. I, I want to mind my overweight. Let me let me help you with the phrasing. Okay. Um, in English, we might say, for example, I, I need to pay attention to my weight. I Something that you you have to think about, but not think about every second. But I have to pay attention to my finances. All right. I don't mm -hmm. think about my my bank account every second, but I I need to be careful of it. I need to pay attention to my weight. It's a useful okay. phrase to talk about something that we think about, but not you know every okay. second of I, every day. I, I I always pay attention that I eat. Yeah, I think so. I all right. I can see that, Martin. You pay attention to your health. And you know, frankly, I'm angry at you, and I'm jealous <laughs> because we should all pay attention to our health and our weight, but some of us lack willpower. Me, for example. Okay. Uh, all right. Now I, I want to talk about dining out. Kind of a different aspect. Uh, I'm gonna. Roger, since you're so good at describing and since you started us out, I would like you to try talking about a restaurant where the atmosphere was very different. Uh, the most interesting atmosphere that of a restaurant you've been to. Roger, do you, do you know what I mean by when I say atmosphere? Yeah, like the environment of the restaurant. Sure. Uh, 
the environment of the restaurant, and uh, also it includes the f sort of feeling uh, that the environment evokes, the, the feeling it makes. For example, if you go to a restaurant and they're playing violin, and there's candles, and it's very dim and quiet, and there's cozy tables for two, I would definitely say that has a romantic atmosphere. It, the feeling is romance and love and what a doll. Okay, talk to well, me. Talk to me about a restaurant that had an interesting atmosphere. I remember in the last year, I went with my wife to Cuba. Oh, and really? Yeah, and there were uh, a restaurant that uh, it was really, really good. We we really liked it because uh, it had uh, people uh, uh, dancing, dancing in I don't know how to say Cuban. The Cuban music is. I don't son, know either, but it's, it's son awesome. Cubano is yeah. The the name in Spanish is Son Cubano. I don't okay. know in English what is the name. And in there were also a, a band from Son Cubano playing uh, some songs from 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 <coughs> they were the authors of the of the songs that they were singing. And oh, the voice awesome. of the the girl that was that was singing uh, was great. We really like it. They offered us uh, a CD, and <laughs> we bought we bought a CD because it was amazing. Yeah, and the atmosphere the atmosphere were uh, really that what what Cuba is. Uh, the the dancing the the music uh, the space were uh, really really good cool well, it's a ni nice experience for the yeah, it, for the trip yeah it sounds awesome I, I would it sounds great you make me want to do it uh, I would love to go to a restaurant where there's a uh, a live Cuban band with original music. By the way, Roger, um, if a band is playing their their uh, their own music, we say it's original music. Okay. So uh, the band is playing original music, for example, um, as an as an adjective, but it it means that it's their own. And but the opposite, for example, if a band is playing all Beatles music. We say that they're a cover band. They cover other musicians. So to tell the difference, a band playing original, oh, the, we saw a great band playing original music. They were super. Or the opposite, uh, well, not the opposite, but a band that plays other people's music. Oh, they played mostly original music, but they threw in three or four covers. I can use it as a noun, cover music. Uh, okay, well, that, that sounds awesome. I'm I'm totally jealous. I would love to go to Cuba. That sounds really great. How was the food, though, Roger? Is Cuban good, food we, good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we tried some some of the foods from Cuba, and that one uh, was a, a lunch. Yeah, at, uh, at the at the noon. Yeah. Uh, and it tasted tasted good. Is Cuban food spicy? Is there a lot of seafood? Which help me out here. I, I don't know very all it's I not, know about not, is mojitas, uh, you know, the, the rum drink. Yeah. Yeah. We try mojitos too in <laughs> place yeah. where Ernest Hemingway used to go. <laughs> uh, mojitos and <coughs> what cool. is the name of the other one? Hito, the other one that you try in Floridita. 
No, I, I, I don't remember know. the name. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. It's not so spicy. It's, it's normal. So the, spicy. the rice is the, the rice. We in Colombia we used to eat uh, uh, white rice. Mm -hmm. The the rice from Cuba is like uh, like black. Oh, like, like if you put uh, coke in the in the rice, is it wild and it rice? It turns to and it turns to to black. It's not in it's not white. The rice is not white. Is it be, is it because it's wild rice? Wild. Yeah, yeah. wild rice has the the hulls. Rice kernels. The little piece of rice has black. Shell, almost like a shell. Um, it's called a hull. Okay, this is very technical, but to make flour or other grains, usually you remove the hull of the seed, well, which is basically rice. That's why it's white. It's, uh, rice is not white. No, it's not there, white at all. No, white. no. Okay, rice. In reality, it's never white. The hull is removed, and then it's bleached. It's pro been processed. Very strange what human beings do to their food. But anyway. Uh, okay. Well, well, thanks, Roger. Okay. All right. now, I totally want to go to Cuba now for lunch today. <laughs> Fausto. Lobster man. Okay. Talk to me. I want you to tell me about the most interesting atmosphere in a restaurant that you've ever experienced. Talk to me okay. about a very interesting restaurant experience. Okay. Well, in my case, I love uh, to I love to eat different kind of food. Unfortunately, uh, here in Guadalajara. Uh, because I'm living in Guadalajara, Jalisco, we have a lot of kind of uh, different kind of restaurants. Talking about, uh, for example, Indian food, uh, obviously Mexican food, uh, Brazilian food. In my case, I think that I would like to to talk about my experience in a Brazilian restaurant. Here, it's called Fogon to Brazil. It was very interesting because uh, the waiter or the servers usually use a spades to serve the food. For example, in here, in here uh, they usually use a spade, a spade, no swords. Sorry. Swords. Uh, Yes, a big, uh, very big or large sword uh, <laughs> with uh, pieces of meat, for example, a chicken, uh, a spicy sauce, sausage, uh, and pork, beef, obviously. Uh, if you want to eat a chicken, you can select this one because I think that this is a buffet. And you can select uh, whatever you want to eat. Uh, that is very interesting. So you can enjoy al alcohol drink um, uh, popular in Brazil. It's called caipirinha in that kind in this kind of restaurant. Uh, yeah. um, uh, it's very tasty for me because <laughs> uh, they uh, they are mixed uh, alcohol. Ron, I think that the correct name is here is Ron, with uh, different kind of fruits, uh, uh, pineapples, uh, apples, or something like that. Uh, I think that uh, talking about the atmosphere, uh, the restaurant usually plays uh, Brazilian songs like at atmospheres. Uh, for me, that was very interesting. I love the uh, Brazilian food. Uh, and that's it. Okay. All right. All right. Talking about okay. Uh, Roger and Fausto both spoke about the music, what you hear, um, what you see, uh, what you taste, what you smell. Those would all be talking about the atmosphere and how you feel when you're there. Uh, it sounds like both of those places that 
these two guys you guys described are, are seem like they're very ooh, energizing and exciting. Like uh, I can imagine being there, I would be pretty excited. Um, Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, yeah, that's right, teacher. I also would like to share with you uh, the attitude of services when you ah. you are the in in that restaurant, for example. The the weather are very uh, a kind of uh, people welfare, and also uh, uh, they very happy or they look. Very happy all time. I don't know exactly <laughs> what is the correct uh, feelings <laughs> in your private life or something like that, but they uh, they usually look very happy, and also they celebrate all special moments that you are spending in that time. For example, if you go there by celebrate uh, celebrating your uh, birthday or something like that. They usually give a little piece of uh, pie or something like that. Uh, and that is free, uh, and I think that the atmosphere uh, is very comfortable because they all the time they are happy. I don't know why. <laughs> um, Fausto, because the entire wait staff, okay, all the waiters is called the wait staff. The entire wait staff are on drugs, Fausto. That's why. <laughs> I <Okay>. guess. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just so you know. Okay. So it's not a mystery anymore. Okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> Martin. Oh boy. <laughs> Sorry, Hooters. <laughs> no, it's quite okay. I I obviously reacted immediately because obviously your teacher has been to Hooters. Uh, clearly, okay, never mind. Okay, do they have Hooters in other countries? In Mexico, we have Hooters. In they Mexico do. City. Oh, in no kidding. Cancun and in wow. Tijuana, Tijuana, in the north part of Mexico. Oh my God! I, I think, need to. I think, I think it's a good atmosphere too. <laughs> yeah, actually it is. <laughs> actually it is. Uh, you know, uh, besides, you know, of course, Hooters, for those of you who don't know, is a chain of restaurants who employs largely, mostly mm, well-developed <laughs> young women as waitstaff, uh, and then they dress them in a very tight outfit. The women attend in on the on the pants. But you know the thing is, not only are they very attractive young women, but they actually do have an atmosphere, very friendly, informal. Uh, actually, Hooters has a great atmosphere, Martin. You have guys coming off of their banking job, wearing a suit and a tie, and they kind of all crouch around a table, drinking a pitcher of beer, and the the waitress like puts her elbow on the table when she takes your order. I don't know. It's very casual and relaxed. Uh, mm -hmm. It actually does have a kind of a relaxed, friendly, welcoming atmosphere. Really. Yeah. In, in in Mexico, in some restaurant, the people try uh, like to go to a specific restaurant because he can watch a big TV, for example. He Ah, a special event or, or some sport, uh, football, baseball. The people sure. like to go to some restaurant to get the, the atmosphere, to get fun and eat and, and get uh, ex to, to be exciting. Sure. Uh, in English, we call that a sports bar. Even though maybe its primary function may be a bar serving alcohol or it may be trying to be more of a restaurant, either way, if they've got TVs where you can see from any mm -hmm. angle, it's a sports bar. Yeah, that, that, for me that kind of restaurant uh, doesn't have the, the best dinner. You just have the best <laughs> and offer to throw the, to spend the time. Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean. But, yeah, well, Martin, I live in the Philippines, so I'm like 12 hours apart from America. So if I want to watch American sports, 
I go to a sports bar for breakfast, so I'm having coffee and eggs, watching mm -hmm. the football game. You know, at, at eight in yeah. the morning, and that's eight in the evening, of course, in the states. Yeah, so I go to sports bars sometimes, just because I can't see those games and I can't feel that atmosphere as well. I, you don't just don't see that here. So I have to do my sports bars in the morning. It's kind of weird, because in a, when I lived in America, you would go a, to a sports bar on a at least late afternoon or evening, of course, and hang out with your buddies. You know, it's sports. Yeah. It's a guy thing. You know what I mean? A very masculine, sweaty, stinky atmosphere. Spill my beer on my shoes. Partly <laughs> pee my pants. Yeah! Kind of atmosphere, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, you're allowed to be stupid atmosphere. Okay. Well, anyway. You know what I mean. I know you do. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, Gregory, talk to me about a restaurant you've been to and uh, an unusual atmosphere. Unusual. Or, or uh, interesting. Not, okay, interesting, I should say. I'm sorry. Last year, my wife and I was in Roma, and uh, we go to Piazza di Navona, and I like this piazza. It's my second time in Roma. We sit out. I don't remember what we eat, but uh, it's very, very impressive and uh, good atmosphere. And uh, you know, straight musician and uh, painters and a lot of tourists. Uh, but I don't uh, know why uh, this make me feel blue. Uh, I don't. Know. I know why because it's over so quickly. I like this place. <laughs> you wish it could continue on and on. Yes. Yeah. It was so uh, short, and uh, a lot of places in Roma was nice, but uh, this piazza make me sentimental. Okay, now. Gregory, you you mentioned uh, street musicians, correct? Uh, I call them stray, stray musicians, like stray, stray dogs. Stray. That's <laughs> <laughs> <not> right. <laughs> well, were they outside on the street, on the sidewalk? Yes, uh, it's just coming and uh, begin uh, the music, and after that, uh, asking for money. Sure. Okay. Okay. In English, we we would call that a street musician, street. or if okay. it's a magician or somebody who's juggling, whatever, a street performer. Okay. I, I, tra I translate from Russia. It's, uh, from Russia is uh, stray. Yeah. Okay. Well, in English, we use stray exactly as you said to talk about dogs and cats, <laughs> mostly, but. Uh, uh, okay, so you guys are total. Uh, by the way, you guys are totally making me jealous. I mean, dining in Cuba and listening to an original band, uh, eating um, Brazilian food in Guadalajara, going to a sports bar with Martin. You guys are eating in Rome on the street. You guys are making me crazy. Gregory, were you dining El Fresco? Another term, okay, stolen from Italians because they know how to eat. Um, and it's not a coincidence you were dining in Rome. Uh, okay. Were you, were you dining al fresco? Do you know what that means, Gregory? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Al, al fresco, I... I typed it in the, the verbling. Restaurant? Yeah, when you when you dine al fresco, you're eating outside. You're outdoors. So Over the tables the and that's right, probably on the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it could be, you know, behind a hotel on a patio overlooking the pool. As, as long as you're outside, we 
can sit, describe that as dining or eating al fresco outdoors. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Uh, I don't know why, but it's fun to eat al fresco. I don't know what it is, but yeah, I, I liked I liked the eating in al yeah. fresco because you 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 watch the people walking around you. And yeah, you eat, right. And you can talking about the people or something happened in front of you. It's, it's so interesting. <laughs> Sometimes it's right. amazing because some music uh, in, from the street uh, is, is coming around you, play around you, and you know. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, I like to dine al fresco by the pool, especially where the young women are wearing bikinis. <laughs> <laughs> It helps my appetite. I get hungrier. What can I tell you? Okay, I'm a guy. I, I'm sorry. I apologize to any. <laughs> no problem. Uh, yeah, I don't mean to offend anyone, but okay, uh, gentlemen, tr um, Tran, Tran, welcome to the class. But I'm sorry to say to you and to everyone, I'm afraid yeah, we're out of time. Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Hi, Tran. Yeah. How, how yeah. are you? Uh, I have a quick. Uh, did he the first time I I joined the class? Yeah, I have a question. Sure, shoot. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I um, I think uh, if uh, if I join the class, I must pay for money. But I don't have pay money. I still join the class. Tran, you're breaking up. I'm sorry, I can't. You're uh, 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 like that. So uh, one more time. Can you try one more time, and then we'll uh, yeah. yeah. Um, bye, everyone.